This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 15th day of May in the year 2023. I'm Swetlana Marshall reporting. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Chief Magistrate and Ghana Defense Force Colonel Anne McLennan officially retired today after more than 37 years of service. Of those 37 years, she served 16 years as a judicial officer. Senior Magistrate Sheridan Isaac Marcus is currently performing the duties of Chief Magistrate. Chief Magistrate McLennan was appointed in October 2015 by the Judicial Service Commission. At a recent cocktail reception held in her honor, Chief of Staff Brigadier Omar Khan congratulated the Chief Magistrate for her strong and dedicated service to country. Colonel McLennan has served under 10 of the 12 Chief of Staff since the establishment of the GDF. Her career in the local judiciary commenced in 2007 when she was seconded from the Ghana Defense Force to the judiciary to sit as a magistrate in the Georgetown Magisterial District. Over the years, she presided over courts in the Georgetown, West Demerara and East Demerara Magisterial Districts. Prior to going on her pre-retirement leave, she presided over Court 1 at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. In the early years of her life, the Chief Magistrate enlisted in the Ghana Defense Force. According to the GDF, the Chief Magistrate enlisted in the Defense Force in September 1985 and successfully graduated from the Standard Officers Course 17 in 1986. In 1994, she gained her Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of the West Indies and later in 1996, a legal education certificate from the Sir Hugh Wooding Law School in Trinidad. She has also earned a postgraduate certificate in diplomacy from the University of Guyana. The Chief Magistrate was admitted to the bar in Guyana in 1996. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever, and it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Oh my lord. I just love to shop in this store. My customers, them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household oh, items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. Night, a new flavor of Sunshine Snack Zumas made for the pepper lover in you. Caution, look for the Ignite Flames on your favorite packs of Sunshine Snacks and get ready to handle the heat. Buster, Buster Flavor Flavors. We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors. Buster Flavors, that my craver. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the Buster Flavor Flavors. Grab a Buster Flavor Flavor Flavors. Yeah. Thirst Buster, grab a Buster, Buster flavor tastes the savor. Buster, Buster flavor flavors. Buster, Buster flavor flavors. Strong and solid, in countries far and wide. Assurance, we're standing by your side. Golden service, half a century and more. New India Assurance, our policies are secure. From the heart of India, we serve these islands. The strength that you can trust, you're safe when you come to us. New India Assurance Company, assurance when you need it most. 
for your home, motor or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brigdam next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260-4157. Comfortable parking available. The Ghana Police Force today issued wanted bulletins for two men, Troy Bruce, also known as Blacker, and John Ross, also known as JR, who are wanted for questioning in relation to the murder of two men killed in a home invasion in Linden over the weekend. Both of the suspects are from Wisma Linden. The third suspect in the deadly home invasion was found dead. The body of the man whose identity is still to be known was found in an abandoned house in Wisma Linden on Sunday. The body bore chop wounds to the back. He is believed to have been among the three persons who invaded the home of a gold miner in Linden and shot the miner and an elderly relative dead. Other family members had reported that one of the bandits was wounded during the home invasion. It was just after 4 o'clock on Saturday morning that the Wisma home of the gold miner was invaded by three armed men who demanded money and valuables. As the father and other relatives sought to defend themselves, three of them were shot by the bandits. Two were left dead while the third remains hospitalized. The two murdered family members were identified as 87-year-old Johnson Bowen and 58-year-old Manuel Dos Santos. Police investigations are ongoing. Let's tell you now that Guyana has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Saudi Arabia for the financing of development projects in Guyana. Under the MOU, development works for the housing sector and the construction of the Wisma Bridge will be funded through the Saudi Fund for Development. The two projects total more than US $150 million. Finance Minister Dr. Ashley Singh, who signed the agreement on behalf of the government of Guyana, offered thanks to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for cooperation and partnership in Ghana's development. Dr. Singh attended the opening ceremony of the 2023 Islamic Development Fund Group annual meeting in Saudi Arabia this past weekend. The Saudi Fund for Development finances development projects in developing countries by granting them loans and technical aids necessary for financing studies and institutional support. The Ministry of Finance said as the Ghana government continues with its infrastructural development push, new projects will be unveiled. Over 136.1 billion dollars was allocated in this year's budget for the enhancement of roads and bridges across the country. With a clear mandate from its membership, longtime journalist Nazima Ragbir was on Sunday elected to serve a second term as president of the Ghana Press Association. The association's general members' meeting and elections took place at the Theatre Gill. Ragbir was able to fend off her only challenger for the position, Neil Marks, by a vote margin of 70 to 25. Just before the elections and immediately after, Marx, who previously served as GPA president, raised concerns about the list of voters and the eligibility of some voters. On Friday, I wrote asking if you could have an urgent meeting given concerns regarding this list. That was also denied. I reminded it from asking it for an agenda. I provided it immediately, but I never heard back from the association. Even on the Mark's previous leadership, the Press Association never provided a voters list. When members gathered for their meeting, they would be informed of the eligible members who can vote. In her address to the meeting, Ragabir spoke of some of the challenges that confronted the association and the association's various initiatives to get more members trained. Several training programs were hosted over the years covering various issues. The business registration was the easier option and it was agreed by the Marxist administration that the business registration would be pursued on the Mr. Neil Marx's name. The Guyana Press Association was registered. That registration would later hold the Guyana Press Association Bank account hostage as the GPA trading under Mr. Marx's name would later affect how we access our funds even after he left office. The Guyana Press Association was able to rescue the bank account eventually but still had to rely on business registration now under my name. As early as 2019, the new executive pursued changing the arrangement, and in 2020 using the services 
of Wishart Consultancy, an attorney at law firm in Jarvis, who started the process of incorporation. The process has since been stalled because the body would need to amend its constitution at a meeting. Moving ahead, the GPA president has noted the need for the association to have its own secretariat and at least one permanent staff member. She also spoke about the need for the association's constitution to be examined and reformed. The Guyana Press Association more than ever needs its own secretariat. All of us here are working members of the media and you can imagine how difficult it is for us to manage the day-to-day -day operations and demands of the organization. Royal Tony was elected vice president of the association with Ariana Gordon serving as secretary and Svetlana Marshall elected treasurer. Five other committee members were elected. The GPA elections on Sunday followed a failed attempt by social media commentator and contractor Mikhail Rodriguez, aka Guyanese critic, to block the elections by going to the court. Rodriguez wanted the court to put a hold to the elections until he was accepted as a member of the association. The court dismissed his application as wholly misconceived. Help me out with this thing, man. You just know everything. What's all this talk about local government election? Local government refers to the mayor and councillors who manage the affairs of our towns, like Georgetown, and the chairman and councillors of the Neighborhood Democratic Council. Oh, but why is that important to me? Dolly, it is very important. Every day, local government officials make decisions that affect you, your family, and the community. They serve the people within the community in which they were elected. Oh, Miss Anne, me not understand all them big words you use there. Tell me what local government does do. All right, darling. Local government is responsible for maintaining and protecting public property like our community centers and the playgrounds, for collecting the garbage, maintenance of the streets, cleaning of the drains and the carpets, and so much more. Oh, I now understand. Thanks, Miss Anne. You're welcome. I'm going to show off for my friends them why I will vote at the local government elections. That's a good thing. Let's go. Monday, June 12, 2023 is Local Government Elections Day. For further information, contact GCOM or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Environmental Protection Agencies challenged the High Court ruling against it and the ESO Exploration Company will see oral arguments taking place on the 29th of May. Last week, the EPA moved to the Court of Appeal after High Court Judge Justice Sandil Kisun ruled that ESO Exploration must provide an unlimited parent company guarantee agreement in accordance with the environmental permit for the Lisa project in the Starbrook Block or face suspension. In a case management conference this morning, Justice of Appeal Rishi Prasad set strict deadlines for written submissions for all parties involved. Even with the date set, the EPA's attorney Sanjeev Datadin sought to stay the ruling of the High Court, including the orders granted pending the hearing and determination of the appeal. But senior counsel Sinan Jairam, who represents the interests of Frederick Collins and Godfrey White, objected. Justice Prasad, while noting that the appellate court is cognizant of the deadline given by the High Court, said he will be monitoring the situation closely and appropriate action will be taken if necessary. As such, no stay was granted. The High Court has ordered the Environmental Protection Agency to issue an enforcement notice to EEPGL. 
directing it to provide within 30 days an unlimited liability parent company guarantee agreement or an unlimited liability affiliate company guarantee. The guarantee is intended to protect Guyana and its people from any potential oil spill disaster in accordance with the Constitution. However, the EPA in its appeal warned that the ruling of the High Court could have devastating impact on the country's economy. U.S. Ambassador to Guyana Sarah Ann Lynch is preparing to say her goodbyes as the process has started for the appointment and accreditation of a new U.S. Ambassador. The U.S. Embassy in Georgetown has announced that it will be hosting a farewell event in honor of the outgoing Ambassador. Ambassador Lynch has been the U.S. government's head of mission in Guyana since March 2019, and her tour of duty, which was scheduled to end last year, was extended. During her tenure, she played a key role in bringing several U.S. businesses to Guyana and collaborated with the government of Ghana in a number of areas including security, environment and infrastructural development and democracy. Under her watch, the U.S. Embassy also assisted Ghana in accessing COVID-19 vaccines and other emergency medical supplies during the COVID-19 pandemic. She was one of the critical voices following the protracted 2020 general and regional elections here. Late last year, the White House announced that career U.S. diplomat Nicole D. Theriou has been nominated as the next U.S. ambassador to Guyana. Her nomination hearing was recently completed. She is coming to Ghana from Pakistan, where she served in the U.S. Embassy there. She also served previously as Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Haiti, and prior to that, she was Director for Immigration and Visa Security at the National Security Council in the Executive Office of the President. The U.S. government also recently appointed a new Deputy Chief of Missions in Guyana. Hi, Mr. Smart. Please stop a minute and just clarify this thing for me. Oh, Sonel, don't tell me it's local government questions again. Yeah, boss. <laughs> How come the local government elections different from the general elections? Okay, the local government election systems allow for half of the members of the council to be elected through the proportional representation system, just like general elections. And the other half will be elected through the first past the post system. This system allows for one candidate to be elected to represent the constituency where he or she lives. For example, if a council got 30 seats, like the Georgetown municipality, 15 will be elected through the proportional representation system, and the other 15 will be elected through the first past the post system, giving a total of 30 councillors. So that means that every constituency will have one of its citizens who live there having a seat and representing it at council. Yes, Sunil, you know, that's correct. And if you need to know anything else about the electoral system for local government elections, just call G, come. <laughs> Take care, Sunil. All right. Monday, June 12, 2023 is Local Government Elections Day. For further information, contact GCOM or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more.
Look who's in the mix now. The new Busta Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Busta Soda Water today. Busta Soda Water. Now available for only $120. Gaiol Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Gaiol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, according to Trinidad Express, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force will begin joint paroles in Tobago on Tuesday. This is in response to the six murders recorded on the island for the year so far. Joint paroles will include a platoon of soldiers from Trinidad. The 30 soldiers will team up with soldiers already on the island as well as police officers. Last week, during a news conference in Tobago, Assistant Commissioner of Police Collis Hazel said the gang members from Trinidad traveled to Tobago and were causing havoc for residents. He said the joint army police patrols will consist of two teams which will each be led by an inspector. Last Tuesday, Tobago recorded its sixth murder with a shooting death of Hakim Thomas. He was shot dead during a drive-by. There were 10 murders in Tobago in 2022. Caribbean Airlines on Saturday resumed flights to the Venezuelan capital, Caracas. In a statement on Saturday, Carl said it was pleased to announce the resumption of operations to Caracas and the expansion of its route network to the Eastern Caribbean in the coming months. These are significant milestones for the airline and signal its intention to continue its growth trajectory, it added. The flights between Trinidad and Caracas will initially operate every Saturday with increased frequency expected a late Later on, Cal said. Caribbean Airlines said the restart of flights to Caracas and the expansion of the airline's route network to the Eastern Caribbean are just the beginning of its ambitious plans. And finally tonight, international news. Thailand's two main opposition parties agreed on Monday to form a ruling coalition after they trounced in a weekend election military-backed rivals that have controlled government for nearly a decade. The move forward party and opposition heavyweight Pua Thai dominated Sunday's ballot in a surrender of army-backed parties, but could face challenges in mustering enough support to vote in a prime minister. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Swetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.